I'll keep them up here. <laughs> oh, it's a glorious day because we serve a glorious God. Amen? That's right. And look, if you want, you want to worship the Lord, if you need some room and you want to get out in the aisles or come up front and worship God, you feel free to do that today, okay? Because we want, we want to give God all our praise. I don't want to be the only crazy-looking person in here, okay? I'm ready to give God a crazy praise. So, you know, if you want to come up and come up front or in the aisle, you just go ahead and go right ahead. Amen? I'll give you permission. I'll let the pastor deal with me later. Amen. Okay, come on. Let's do glorious. Amen. Come on, put your hands together. Gloria, shout it out and Gloria, make it loud and Jesus, we shout your name, Jesus, we make your praise, Gloria.
Good morning, church. Look at your neighbor and say, good morning. morning. The Lord is here, amen? I said, the Lord is here, amen? Amen. You can be seated in the presence of the Lord just for a moment or two as we prepare to pray in the name of Jesus. No other name. I said, church, there's no other name. And this has just been laid on my heart, so I want to share a little something with you guys, if that's okay. If it's not, um, tell me later. Uh, <laughs> it's so easy when we, we, we are taught, and I know I was taught at a, a, a young age to pray in the name of Jesus. It, and, and we do that here, and, and we take no light of that. But sometimes it's easy to slip out of the true understanding and just begin to add that on to the end of our prayers. We, we, we make it a, a magical phrase that the Lord is supposed to honor because we say in the name of Jesus at the end of our prayers, that means he, he's got to do what I just said he, he's got to do. Well, that's not the case. That's not what being in Jesus' name means. Because we, we can look in the scripture and, and find the story of the seven son, sons of Sceva. If you recall, they also prayed in Jesus' name. But something didn't happen when they prayed in his name. If you remember the story, these guys were, were professional. Uh, uh, I mean, they, they cast out demons. They did this for a profession. And, and they heard this new guy, I mean, this guy named Paul, who was, who was doing the same thing, but he, he did it a little bit different than what they did. So he, when Paul did it, he, he said, in the name of Jesus, be cast out. So these guys were like, well, this, this is the new thing. So this is what we got to do. So they found themselves a demon-possessed person. They pulled him into a house, and these seven sons of Sceva gathered around him and say, you know, demon, be cast out in the name of Jesus of whom Paul preaches. The thing is, it didn't happen for them like it happened for Paul. The demon looked at them and said, Paul, I know. Jesus, I know. But who are you? And the story goes that these seven guys against this one man who was demon-possessed, then ran out of the house bloody and naked because they did not understand the power that is being in the name of Jesus. So when we say in Jesus' name, it's not because he owes us. When we say in Jesus' name, it's because he knows us. That, that knowledge is intimacy, we don't pray because it's, it's, it's a magical phrase. We don't do that. When we say in Jesus' name, it's because I know who I am in him. And the demons need to flee because of who I am in him. And that cancer needs to flee because of who I am in him. That every knee shall bow at his name. And every tongue confess to the glory of the God. It's because I know who I am and he knows who I am. And nothing, nothing can stand against us. So when we pray over these names in the name of Jesus, as we sing the next song, which happens to be called In the Name of Jesus, we need to be thinking about, are we in the name or we just know the name? I want to get to a place where demons shake because I walk in the room, not because of who I am, but because of who is in me. That cancer must flee. That people will come to know Jesus, not because of who I am. I don't need to make my name famous. His name is glorious. So with this in mind, as we go before the Father, let's pray for Mickey Walton, who needs healing. James Summer, who's, who needs healing. Mike Papadopoulos, who needs healing. Danny Taylor, who needs healing. And the Jones family in the loss of Sean. With that, let's go before our Father. Father, we thank you this morning that we can boldly approach the throne. It's not because of who we are, it's because of who you are, God. It's because of who we are in you, Lord. In the name of Jesus, we come before you. It's because we have a relationship with us, because we know you and you know us, Lord, that we can call healing that happened for Mickey. Healing that happened for James, for Mike Papadopoulos, for Danny, for, for the comforter to show up in the Jones family household even now, Lord. Lord, you said where two or more 
or gather is touching any one thing that it shall be done. And we stand upon the promises of your word in the name of Jesus. The mighty name. Oh, there's healing in your name, Jesus. There's salvation in your name, Jesus. There's miracles in the name of Jesus. And God, we pray, not on our own merit, but because of what your son has paid. And because he calls us your sons and your daughters. He calls us the rightful heirs. God, we stand humble but proud because of who we are in you, Lord. So it's in the name of Jesus that we pray for these healings to be done. It's in the name of Jesus that we, we pray for salvation to come into this place. In the name of Jesus, we welcome you, Holy Spirit, to move and disrupt and to reorientate the Lord. This is about you, God. This is not about us. We want to see your kingdom come. We want to see your will be done. And Lord, we will be happily used by you to see it done. It's not my name. It's your great name, oh Lord. And we love you. And we worship you this morning as we give that great name the honor that is due, the glory that is due. And we love you. And we thank you, Father. If you believe that, church, would you give me a hand clap of praise this morning? Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jimmy. That's great. Well, hallelujah. Are you glad to be here on Memorial Day weekend? I would, I, you couldn't give me the beach this weekend. Between bike week and Memorial Day weekend, yeah. I'm glad I'm home. I'm glad I'm on Smith Lane, where, you know, if, it's, if two cars meet, it's unusual. We just have, but anyway, I'm glad you're here, and uh, thank God so much for what he's doing. We, we're, we're glad to have our Word of Life children's ministry with us today. Let's right, welcome them in the house. Amen. And then the Awaken Youth, youth Group are helping our choir out today. We appreciate that. As well as the old people. And... Uh, we're going to have a special, a special presentation, Memorial Day. Um, and the Spanish church, Pastor Castro and the Spanish church, Wiz, thank you. I knew, I knew I would forget somebody, but I, I'm older than I was last Sunday, so it's okay. Um, well, it's not okay, but anyway, uh, Memorial Day, we are going to be honoring on Memorial Day all those who gave their life for us to have this freedom and we thank God for those who did that and and so many I got thinking about a lot of the in, in World War one two Vietnam a lot of the uh, young men and women who gave their life weren't much older if any older than some of these up here on the stage and and that was the extent of their life they weren't able to live but they did that so you and I could enjoy the life that we it's not just time to have a cookout and invite the family over or go on a, a long weekend trip. We want to remember all those who so wonderfully gave their life for us. Amen. Do we have any visitors in the house? If you're a visitor, if you'll hold your hand up, these fine ushers are going to give you a visitor packet. Look at that. Let them know we're glad to see them. Hold it up high. Glad to have you today. Thank you. Come back and be with us again. And uh, we're just here. I was up praying early this morning, probably about 4 30, 5 o'clock this morning. I was praying and, like, and just asking the Lord to, op to open doors and to move in the service. And the enemy shows up. How many of you know the devil will show up in your prayer time? He showed up. He said, Well, you know today's Memorial Day. So you're just going to be there by yourself. And uh, I used to have a dream. I'd stand up, and it was just my wife out down there, and I was up here. But he said, you're going to be out there by yourself. And I said, well, no, you know, maybe there's some folks who <laughs> got to work or got something like me, just don't want to go, whatever. But I got to pray, and I said, Lord, you know what? I'm not worried about how many people are going to be here. I want to fill that house with the glory and with praise and with worship. 
Because he said, we're two or three gathered together in my name. I'm in the midst. So today, I just want to glorify him and praise him and magnify him and lift up his name and thank him. Amen. So we're not worried about empty seats today. We're worried about ringing the glory of God in this place. So if it's like, like Dina was saying, if you got a little room around you, that's okay. Fill it up with praise. Amen. So we, we're going to receive the offering. But before you do, I want to... We, we do a lot of missions. Mike is here. I'm glad he's feeling better and able to be here. There are minis- missionaries over the Philippines, Mike and Milan and Michaela. We have missions that we, rep- we uh, support all of this church. I think a church that teaches giving should practice giving. A church that teaches tithing should practice tithing. So we do that. But we also have the Good News Club. And I, this has become just so close to my heart. So I want to read you something they sent us this week from Good News Club said, Dear Pastor, I want to thank you and your church for partnering with us to reach the children at Simpsonville Elementary through the Good News Club. It has been an exciting year for the Child Evangelism Fellowship, which is who who does the Good News Club, to have Good News Clubs in 100 elementary schools, 12 clubs in various communities. The total enrollment of Greenville Piedmont District was 9,327 children. Nine hundred and twenty-one of these precious children came to faith in Jesus Christ during this school year. Nine hundred and twenty-one. After looking at our statistics, our reports, our statistical reports, we saw that your club, Word of Life's club, had an enrollment of seventy-one during the 2015-2016 school year, and 46 of 71 children received Jesus Christ as their Savior this year. What an incredible outreach for this church. I know that you are thankful to the Lord for your people who, have, according to Psalm 78 and 4, are, are telling, the need, the, telling the next generation the praiseworthy deeds of the Lord, His power and His wonders He has done. We look forward to continuing in partnership uh, Good News Club, and we are so thankful, thankful 71 kids were taught the Word of God because of you, and 40, what did it say, 46 of those children gave their heart to the Lord, and so we're so thankful for that, amen, and along those lines, next Sunday, we're going to be taking in new members to the Word of Life Church, and we're going to be doing baptism service as well, so yeah, amen, that means people are coming to the Lord. So if you are want to participate in that, you can go by the Next Step Center and they'll answer any questions you have and let them know you want to participate. Or you can go online and fill it out. Some folks are doing that. And, and let them know you want to do that. Well, it's time for us to worship in our giving. Anybody blessed in the house? I, I tell you what, you folks, last week was such a wonderful time. You blessed us so much. And, and I... I you know, every Sunday is Pastor Appreciation Sunday at Word Life. Y'all just are so kind and so wonderful. And But last Sunday, you just outdid yourself, and I thank you so much. And, you know, we're still, you know, we're, we're, it's Pastor Appreciation Year so and staff. So you can appreciate them. Bring a cake by the office. We won't get upset. And uh, whatever you want to do, just come by and, and just see us. But especially people you see, the ushers, the workers around, let them know you appreciate what they do and how much you appreciate it. We'll go ahead and ask the ushers to come up and get ready to receive your offering. Like I said, has he blessed anybody in this house? See, the weapons of our warfare, Pastor Philip referred to it in the early service. The weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they're mighty through God. We don't fight and do the things the way the world does it. God doesn't bless us like banks and bars. God blesses us on a different scale. Give and it shall be given unto you, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. You can't outgive God. When I was a young man, I remember in my dad's church, we had a a gentleman that got saved, and he was looking for a job, and he got saved. And so he told the Lord, he said, if you will help me find a good job to take care of my family, I I promise, I I covenant, I'll tithe 20% of what I make if you'll just help me find a job. And the Lord helped him find a job driving a truck. He was a truck driver. So he started tithing 20% like he had vowed to God to do. Well, I don't know what happened, but he started paying 20, uh, 30% tithe. And then he went to 40% tithe. Then he get to 50% tithe every time. 
he wound up owning the trucking company he started working for and he retired early the owner and CEO of that trucking company tithing 80% or 90% sometimes of his income because God had blessed him so much am I telling you to do that <clears throat> no if God tells you you do it don't do it because I say do it but I am telling you you cannot outgive God amen go ahead and stand up on your feet take your offering out hold it up should have had mine out already this is my offering I give it to God I'm expecting I'm believing what he said he will do I'm looking for my miracle if you are shout yes now bring your offering and love on somebody in the house here this morning God bless you I don't want them mad at me. That's awesome, isn't it? Go ahead, let them know we appreciate them, their hard work. One other FYI before we change the order of service. If you're graduating this year, graduating uh, college, high school, whatever you're graduating from, if you haven't turned in your form to be part of our recognition service, please go by Next Step and fill out a form so we'll have... Uh, be able to put you on the program for that as well so keep that in mind as well amen we are again so honored and blessed to be in this country and I, I'm glad that our Hispanic service is in and with us today because they're here and they're part you know that's what makes up America it's different different people from different places with different ideas and different faces and isn't that what South Carolina no, beautiful people and beautiful something like that anyway but america is made up of you know
most of us, our ancestry dates back from somewhere else. And that's what makes America part of the great country that it is. And I just thank God for that. I, you know, I, like I said, I've got, I've got German Cherokee in me, which is a constant inner struggle. But anyway, so that, that explains a whole lot. But um, we want our, our uh, veterans and our military guys to come on up and get ready to start the Memorial Day service. You guys will help these guys up. I tell you what, while they're coming, y'all want to give them a hand, let them know we appreciate them. be seated you can always expect and anticipate and, and look forward to word of life ministries honoring our service folks I am so grateful and thankful and and I just don't have words to express how blessed we are and so Memorial Day Fourth uh, of July Veterans Day we're gonna we're gonna honor the men and women who are have given themselves so you know, that's just part of what we do. But we're going to go to the Lord in prayer. We're going to pray not only for these, the families of those who have been, whose lives were lost in the pursuit of freedom and liberty and justice all over the world, but also those that are over there today. Man, have you seen those, those uh, videos on Facebook of our servicemen worshiping and being baptized and, and, and loaders and, and buckets of, of bulldozers and God, God is awesome and God is great. Will you go to the Lord in prayer with me, please? Father, I thank you because you have allowed us to be here in this day when we are free. There was a time in, in this nation when freedom wasn't as free as it, as it is today. We thank you that God, regardless of the color of our skin, regardless of where we come from, we come un underneath the flag and underneath the banner first the cross of Jesus Christ and second of all the flag of the United States of America and I pray for those soldiers who are over there today those whose lives have been lost we pray for their family we pray for their loved ones those of God who are fighting now and don't know if they will come home be with them I pray Holy Spirit I pray a, a hedge of protection around your people Father God I just thank you for these that have come today and God we say Lord we want you to bless the USA and we want the USA to bless you. We want to be one nation under God, indivisible again, Lord. We pray for revival of this great nation, that we will again remember that it is through God and by God we have come to where we are. Let us remember the, the, the truths that this nation was founded upon and the word that this nation was founded upon, that our Creator deemed all men equal. And it is he that is able to continue that. And we'll praise you for what you do, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Somebody say amen. amen. I'd like to ask the congregation to remain standing as we're going to recite the pledges to the Christian flag and to the United States flag. And I can't help think of a, a verse in John 15, 13. 
Greater love hath no man than to lay down a life for his friends. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Now we'll recite the Christian pledge. Could you bring that up for me, please? And to the Savior for whose kingdom it stands, one Savior, crucified, risen, and coming again, with life and liberty to all who believe. Good morning, church. One day, this is a very, very special for me. I don't know how many of you veterans here have ever been in combat. I don't know if you have. I don't know how many of you have seen one of your comrades fall and never to get up again. I've been in both. I've seen them. I pray that I never had to see it again. Excuse me. We're gathered together today to honor all of those who give their all so that we could be here today to worship and praise our Lord and Savior in peace. We don't have to worry about the way it is in, in the Middle East where the, if you're a Christian, if you don't come over to them, they're going to bury you alive. They want to cut your heads off, drown you in water, burn you alive. Who knows what else they do? This is something that's, that the, the military people have always been stepped forward and kept that from happening here. I pray that they will always continue to do so. And you young ladies and gentlemen, I'm getting old now myself, and I'm going to have to step down. We're going to have to turn this over to you someday. You're going to have to step up and take charge. You're going to have to defend this country, just like the ones in the past. I hate to say it, but some of you will not come back. I pray that all of you will. It's just like they said. Uh, excuse me just a minute. The ones that gave her all that said that we gave her futures for you so that you could have today and tomorrow. And that's what it's all about while we're here today to, to honor those that gave their all so that we could appraise and worship our Lord and Savior. I thank you very much, and if I can say this is probably my last time you'll see me up here, because I'm getting old now. I'm going to pass it down to the younger generation. I thank you for supporting me all these years that I've been up here. You don't know how much you mean to me to look out there and see those smiling, friendly faces. And I pray that all of you just... Have a great, wonderful day. And always remember this day throughout the rest of your life. Memorial Day is for those who gave their lives for you so that you could be free.
Thank you very much, and I appreciate it. You may be. <laughs> you can be seated. Let's watch this video. was getting old and paunchy, and his hair was falling fast. And he sat around the Legion telling stories of the past, of a war that he had fought in, and the deeds that he had done, in his exploits with his buddies. They were heroes, every one. And though sometimes to his neighbors his tales became a joke, all his legion buddies listened, for they knew whereof he spoke. But we'll hear his tales no longer, for old Bill has passed away. The world's a little poorer, for a soldier died today. He will not be mourned by many, just his children and his wife. For he lived an ordinary and quite uneventful life. He held a job and raised a family, quietly going his own way. And the world won't note his passing. For a soldier died today. When politicians leave this earth, their bodies lie in state while thousands note their passing and proclaim that they were great. Papers tell their whole life stories from the time that they were young, but the passing of a soldier goes unnoticed and unsung. Is the greatest contribution to the welfare of our land a guy who breaks his promise and cons his fellow man? or the ordinary fellow who in times of war and strife goes off to serve his country and offers up his life. A politician's stipend and the style in which he lives are sometimes disproportionate to the service that he gives, while the ordinary soldier who has offered up his all is paid off with a medal Perhaps a pension, small. It's so easy to forget them, for it was so long ago that the old bills of our country went to battle. But we know it was not the politicians with their compromises and ploys who won for us the freedom that our country now enjoys. Should you find yourself in danger with your enemies at hand, would you want a politician with his ever-shifting stand? Or would you prefer a soldier who has sworn to defend his home, his kin, and country, and would fight until the end? He was just a common soldier, and his ranks are growing thin. But his presence should remind us we may need his like again. For when countries are in conflict, then we find the soldier's part is to clean up all the troubles that the politicians start. If we cannot do him honor while he's here to hear the prayers, then at least let's give him homage at the ending of his days. 
perhaps just a simple headline in a paper that would say, our country is in mourning for a soldier died. As a young man, I grew up in a small Midwest town. Strange name it had, named Bad Axe. I grew up with Memorial Days in seeing the veterans of World War II march in the parades. So when it became my turn, I went as the country requested. And when we returned, it was a different reception. I thank you all because you do remember what a dear sacrifice that these young men and women are making. We must always remember that without our armed forces, we will not have a free country. We will not have freedom of speech. And Lord, we just thank you that you allowed us to be born and raised or moved here in the greatest country in the world because our military has been ready and willing to serve. Lord, I, I, I just thank you folks so much so because in my generation, we decided that we would never let a veteran come home or a, a serviceman come home and not be thanked. And Memorial Day is about veterans to some extent but it's about my friends and neighbors that made the ultimate sacrifice. At this time, I would like all of the veterans that are in this congregation to stand up and be applauded and appreciated. And I would like to make sure to ask the rest of you, as you see them, when you see them leaving, shake their hand and say thank you. this time we would like to recognize those within our congregation that have passed uh, in 2016. Matthew Byers. Mick Bergen. Ashlyn Neal. Walt Scarberry. At this time we would like to have a brief moment of silence. Thank you. Thank you, guys. One more time, give them all a hand. I know we appreciate it. Thank you so much. Yeah, go ahead. Stand up and applaud them and let them know we're glad to see them. Thank you, guys. They're going to take the flags back out. Oh, okay. You guys are from Fairview Road? Yes. Okay. We appreciate. Yes. Appreciate you guys being with us. Recruiting. Any of you young men and women interested, go by there. They'll be glad to talk with you about a future. Amen. I'm 
so thankful for that. Again, I, I don't think you can do enough to appreciate to appreciate all they've done. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Well, are you ready to work, do a little bit more worship with these folks before we get into the Word? I want to also I want to remind you, Wednesday nights are really growing. We're just having a great number on Wednesday night and a great Bible study. Don't they need to be here with us on Wednesday night? Come on, let them know. Yeah. Just had a great number the last couple of Wednesday nights, especially. It's just get you over that hump day. How you say it, Pat? Say it. Hump day. You did it just like the camel. Amen. But come out and be with us on Wednesday night. We're going to. We do an awesome, just in-depth Bible study, and I know you'll be blessed by it. It's yours. Amen. God is awesome, all right? You agree with me? He's alive. He's in this place. Amen. Come on, let's stand together with us.
people want God to be theirs, but they won't let they won't be his. They want him to do what they want, but they're not willing to do what he wants. Lord, I'm yours today. I am yours today, Lord. I am yours today. Hallelujah. Well, somebody just give God a shout of praise in his house. Come on. Give him a shout of praise. Amen. You be sure and let this group know how much you enjoyed it. Turn to somebody now and love them right there while you're sitting down. Love on somebody where you're sitting. Thank you, guys. Awaken and choir musicians. Hallelujah. I like seeing this stage crowded. I, I'm not going to speak real long today, but I've got a word. Can I give you a word that God has given me for today? He's been, he's been speaking this in my spirit for a couple of weeks now. And I said, Lord, you just please let me know when you're ready to reveal this. And he said, you know, Memorial Day weekend seems like it would be the weekend. Because there's a lot of people that are nervous, concerned, mad, sad, unwilling to get glad about the upcoming election. So I, I've got a, I got a word that's going to, I hope you take it today for what God's given it. You sure are a good looking group of folks though. Look at somebody and tell them, he said I was good looking. Unless you're my wife, and then you're the most beautiful person I've ever seen. She's wonderful. I want to go to... <clears throat> I want to go to... This, this word is, is close to my heart. I want to go to some of my favorite scripture, which I, I guess it all is. Second Chronicles 7 and 13. Second Chronicles 7 and 13. When I... When I shut up heaven, this is God speaking. Thank you, Glenn. You're, you're good looking too. We know somebody that thinks that because they're getting married. When I shut up heaven and there is no rain. Now this is God. Look at this. When I shut up heaven and there is no rain. Or command the locusts to devour the land. Or send pestilence among who? I thought he was a good, just, and loving God. Come on. That's the way. Oh, if God's a loving God, he wouldn't do. He said, I, I, I sent these things among my people. But look, verse 14. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves, pray and seek my face, and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven. I will forgive their sin and heal their land. Now my eyes will be open and my ears attentive to prayer made in this place. For now I have chosen and sanctified this house that my name may be there forever and my eyes and my heart will be there perpetually. Now I want you to look. He starts off verse 15 and 16 with the word now. He starts off saying, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray. This hasn't happened yet. Are you with me? This hasn't happened yet, but God says, even though you haven't humbled yourselves to pray and seek my face and turn from your wicked ways, now I have chosen to hear your prayer. And now I have chosen to do a miracle in your midst. Before you did anything, Pastor Jimmy was talking about people using Jesus' name, thinking it was uh, you know, their, debit, their uh, spiritual debit card or whatever. He said, before you even do this, I've already chosen to do something for you. The only thing preventing me from doing that, the only thing preventing me from hearing your prayer, the only thing preventing me from blessing you like I want to bless you is if my people which are called by my name will humble themselves and pray. Are you with me? Guys, he's, he's already got it there. He's waiting on us to get in the place to receive what he's already given us. 
Are you getting this? We could go home right there. Well, I guess you're not. Are you getting this? <laughs> now I have chosen and sanctified this house. You didn't choose God. He chose you. You thought you got up and walked down to an altar and cried and repented of your sin. He chose you before you ever chose him. If he hadn't chosen you, you'd have died a long time ago. If he hadn't chosen you, you'd have died drunk and high and stupid. But he chose you before you chose him. And we think we got to beg him to keep us. Now I've chosen to sanctify this house that my name will be there forever. My eyes and my heart will be there perpetually. As for you, if you walk before me as your father David walked, and do according to all that I have commanded you, and if you keep my statutes and my judgments, he's going on to tell them, then I'll hear your prayer. A lot of people have a lot of ideas and opinions about this election. But I want to tell you, America, we've still got to say, in God we trust. Not in Hillary Clinton we trust. Not in Bernie Sanders we trust. Not in Ted Cruz we trust. and <laughs> Not in Donald Trump we trust. In God we trust. And so the news recently made a statement I thought was rather comical. It said, in this election coming up, we will be picking the least liked the least unliked candidate to elect as president. So they're two of the most unliked candidates in the history of the nation. Well, I don't know about that, but they, I don't think they could be too unpopular or they wouldn't be where they are. Somebody voted for them. So <laughs> but they got there some way. So we see that this election has got a lot of people, and then now I see people posting you know, all these things. And, and have you seen the, the, the riots going on now in some of the campaign stops? They're rioting and f crashing out police car windows and turning over cars because one of the candidates is a little rough. Seems a little like oxymoron, doesn't it? We don't like him. He's, he's offensive to us, so we're going to trash the city. Anybody alive today? I wish the church could see this one thing. This is what God spoke to me. You're not going to elect anybody who's going to straighten out this country. You are not going to elect anyone who's going to come in on their white horse or their white limo and swoop into Washington and, and, and get up there and straighten out America. America's, and I've been saying this, America's hope is not in the White House, it's in the church house. America's salvation will not come through politics and politicians. America's salvation will come when my people who are called by my name will humble themselves again and pray. Can I get some help this morning? If we could see the power. This is what God spoke to me. Here's what he said. Are you ready? You can take it for what it's worth. God said, the election this, time, this year depends on my church. My church will decide the outcome of this election. I said, wow, that's great. He said, well, you better think about it before you say it's great. I will either send someone into Washington to reward them for their faithfulness or to drive them to their knees. Hello? Hello? I will either send someone to support what they're doing or who will cause them to have to do what they need to do. The church will decide. It's not up to the electorate. And I'm going to get to that after a while. I wish we could see that it's not going to be Washington that gets us back on track. This is the reason the Jews didn't recognize Jesus. The Jews were looking for some great warrior to come riding in with a massive army and armor on to ride in and overthrow the Roman government and to take over the world from a throne and from a, a perspective of politics. That's what they were looking for. So when a baby was born in a manger, they didn't know why. Because God doesn't need to work from the top down. He works from the bottom up. Are you with me? He don't need to work from Washington. He'll work from your house and my house and this house. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It won't be some super duper whooper whopper. 
charismatic individual that has the whole world wrapped around his finger. That's not what God needs. He needs somebody. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray, he doesn't need television. He doesn't need uh, $40 billion or $100 billion. He don't need all that. He needs somebody who will hit their knees in earnest, sincere, heartfelt prayer and say, God, will you bring revival to America again? This is the hope of America. It's in the people of God, not the people in power. Are you with me? It's the power of the Word and the power of the Spirit. 2 Corinthians 10 and 3, we said it already. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war according to the flesh. The weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty in God and pulling down strongholds, casting down arguments, every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, bringing every thought into the captivity of the obedience of Christ. That's what we need. It's the Spirit of God to move in the house of God again. The church must have the power of God. And be living in that power. Look at 2 Timothy 3 and 2. For men will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, unloving, unforgiving, slanderers without self-control, brutal, despisers of good, traitors, headstrong, haughty, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, having a form of godliness but denying its power and from such turn away. Aren't we seeing that today? We heard the other day, well, even uh, 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 Bishop, uh, Lawrence Bishop alluded to it last week. The, the churches that are really moving and growing in America are not Pentecostal churches. The churches that people are flocking to by great numbers are not churches necessarily that have or believe or teach, as uh, Pastor Jimmy was talking about, in the power of the Holy Spirit. You go in, you get your little lessonette, your sermonette, and your serviceette. To go out and be a Christianette. You go in and you learn your magic, whatever formula, and, and, and there's no move of the Spirit, there's no anointing, there's no worship, there's no praise. It's just, and, and they even brag about it. Oh, we don't, we don't do, uh, you know, we don't uh, do worship because sinners, they, don't, they feel uncomfortable in worship. And we don't, you know what? That, I hope sinners feel uncomfortable at Word of Life. I hope they feel so uncomfortable they can't stay sinners. Denying the power thereof. If there's going to be a great, if, if we're going to save America, it won't be in the White House. It'll be in the church house. Now, I'm not saying don't vote. You go vote and you pray. But we're going to have to have a revival in the Spirit of God, a revival in repentance. As Pastor Philip was saying in the early service, we're going to have to have a revival of the move of God if we're going to see this nation go back to where it was. Number one, I want to bring out this point to you. The Word of God said that God appoints authority. Kings, presidents, whatever it is. Look at 2 Chronicles 7, 13. When I shut up heaven and there's no rain, or command the locusts to devour the lamb, or send pestilence among my people. See, like I said, we've got to vote. We've got to be involved. We've got to, we've got to make our voice heard. But the end result is God's choice. God chooses who goes. He has always chosen and will always choose who goes into the White House. <laughs> Thank you for all those amens, both of them. God has not lost control. He's not wringing his hands, worried about who's going in, who's not going in. He's not walking the streets of heaven, wondering what he's going to do. He knows what's going to happen because he has foreordained. God has this. Look at somebody and tell them God has this. You have to believe that God is in control. Why? Look at Romans 13 and 1. Let every soul be subject to governing authorities, for there is no authority except from God, and the authorities that exist are what? Appointed by God. Didn't I say that? Well, you didn't amen me a while ago. Therefore, whoever resists authority resists the ordinance of God, and those who resist will bring judgment on themselves. We may not like it, but they're there because God put them there. And see, I had problems with this. I had, there's been some people in the White House, and I thought, surely God was out sick on that day. Oh, you're so holy. I said, God, whose side are you on? But I told you, God said, I will reward or I will bring repentance to the church. 
In fact, one thing that puzzled me was Exodus 7 and 3, where the Bible said, God said, I will harden Pharaoh's heart and multiply my signs and my wonders in the land of Egypt. But Pharaoh will not heed you so that I may lay my hand on Egypt and bring my armies and my people, the children of Israel, out of the land of Egypt. And so I read that as a young preacher even. And I read where, and God hardened Pharaoh's heart. And God said, I will harden. I said, God, you told Moses to go before Pharaoh and tell Pharaoh, let my people go. And then you harden Pharaoh's heart. Aren't you kind of working against yourself here? Am I the only one? Trying to figure this out. And God said, because if, if it had been easy, they would not have done what they're supposed to do. If it had been easy, they would have been content to stay where they were and let Egypt be their God and Egypt's gods be their God. And so what I had to do was show them what the wages of sin really are. So all this persecution coming against the children of God. Remember what I read, I think it was last week? And the more they persecuted and the more they came against them, the more they grew and they prospered, the more they grew strong in the, in, in the Lord. Can I tell you something? Whoever gets in, we've got to hit our knees and grow and get strong and fight the good fight. Pastor Philip again in the early service, talking about we're in a fight, baby. This is not daycare. This is not, this is not retirement. This is not us the place to go. And We are in a fight. And so what God does is he lets it heat up so we'll remember that our government is not our mama. Mother Earth is not our mother. Father God is our father. I will not lift up my eyes unto Columbia from whence cometh my help. I will not lift up my eyes unto Washington from whence cometh my help. I will lift my eyes unto the heels of God, for my help comes from the Lord. So God is going to send someone who's going to make the church. It's, it's about us. It's about us, church. He's going to send someone who will either reward us or cause us to be what we're supposed to be. Anybody getting this? God will choose the next president of this country, and he will reward us, or he will make us repent. I want to repent now, because I don't know if you heard or not, but they're keeping those jokers four years at a time up there now. <laughs> and I don't want another, I don't, mm -mm. help me, Jesus. I we're not going to get a Bible-thumping, Bible-toting, tongue-talking, holy roller elected into Washington. Not this time, anyway. He ain't on the ticket. But it's not their responsibility. It's our responsibility to be Bible-toting, spirit-filled, anointed, do right, Walk right, talk right. It's the people of God. My people are called by my name. Can I preach on? Look at somebody telling us up to the church. Second Chronicles 7 and 14. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and heal their land. Morality and blessing will not come from Washington. Morality and blessing will not come from Washington. It cannot come. If you legislate and you dictate righteousness, it is not from the heart. You can outlaw. We saw it during Prohibition. There were just as many drunks and alcoholics during Prohibition as there have ever been. They just snuck around and did it. Why? Because it, it was still in their heart. These young people say, what's the prohibition? If people just do right because it's the law, they're not doing right. Well, I wish I had more help anyway. But Proverbs 23 and 7, for as he thinks in his heart, so is he. Eat and drink, he says to you, but his heart is not with you. As a man thinks in his heart. So somebody just coming to Washington, and, and I, I, I say, you know, we're, we're receiving recompense for passing these stupid laws that are going against Christianity. I, I believe that. Righteousness exalts a nation, but sin is a reproach to any people. That's the word of God. But can I tell you, if the only reason people do right is because they don't want to go to jail, it's still in their heart. 
So it's not going to come from Washington because Washington can't change your heart. It's not going to come from government because government can't change your heart. We've got to get people's hearts right as well as their head. That's why some people have a hard time overcoming temptation because they do what they have to do to get along with you. But when they're not with you, they do what they want to do. If the only reason you do right is because you don't want to be punished or you don't want to be kicked out of church, guess what? You might as well just do what you want to do. Because God is not up here. God is here. I don't have God in my head. My mind changes every split hundredth of a second. Sometimes faster than that squirrel. But my heart is set on God. God is in my heart. He's not in my mind. And so we've got to get people's heart right. And that doesn't come through government. It comes through the people of God, the house of God, the move of God. Amen? There must be a change of heart. Ezekiel 11 and 19. Then I will give them one heart. I will put a new spirit in them. I will take the stony heart out of their flesh and give them a heart of flesh that they may walk in my statutes and keep my judgments and do them. They shall be my people and I will be their God. But as for those whose hearts follow the desire for the, their detestable things and their abominations, I will recompense their deeds on their own heads, says the Lord God. It's got to be a change of heart. We can, I, hope we get, I hope we get spirit-filled Supreme Court justices over the next four to eight years. Praise God, I hope we do. But they can't change people's hearts. I hope we get a, 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 I hope whoever, whoever gets elected finds Jesus and gets filled with the Spirit and has, turns, a, turns it into a, a camp meeting on the White House lawn. Praise God. But it's got to change people's hearts. I'll say one thing. Sometimes you have better chance at converting a heathen than you do somebody who thinks they're right. I love you. Is this okay today? We've got to change the heart. 2 Timothy 3 and 5. They can't just have a form of God. Let's deny the power there. Every said, from such, stay away. We need the Spirit of God to change hearts. Number three. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to find a place to quit. We, we hold the key. Okay, I got permission. 2 Chronicles 7 and 14. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves. And I'm starting this. I'm going to be preaching this the next couple of weeks. To humble ourselves, to pray, seek his face and turn from our wicked ways. I will hear from heaven. I will forgive their sin. And I will heal their land. America needs a healing. He said, now my eyes will be open and my ears attentive to the prayer made in this place. He said, I'm listening for it. I'm listening for your prayer, but I don't hear it. I hear the TV. I hear the radio. I hear the telephone. I'm listening for your prayer. Now I'm listening for it. I'm attentive to hear your prayer. Where is it? Because all you've got to do is humble yourself to pray and quit saying, I got this. I got this. I'm okay. I can, get, I can maneuver this. I don't want to hear that, God said. I want to hear you humble yourself and say, God, I don't want to get out of the bed this morning unless you get out with me. I don't want to get in the car unless you get in the car with me. I don't want to start the car. I don't want to drive down the road. I don't want to get on the road unless you're going with me. I want to humble myself and pray and not be so arrogant as to say, I don't need God today. Because when you're not praying, that's what you're saying. I don't need God to get through this. I don't need God to help me with this. I don't need to humble myself and pray and seek his face and not be so arrogant to think I can handle this because he'll let you handle it. Anybody appreciating the word of God this morning? Yeah. It's the church's call to change the world. The church has lost our power and we're letting the world just kick us around and beat us up and treat us like a a little stray puppy. Matthew 21 and 12, Jesus said, it, uh, went in the temple of God and drove out those who brought and, uh, bought and sold in the temple. 
and overturned the tables of the money changers and the seats of those who sold doves. And he said to them, it is written, my house shall be called a house of, but you have made it a den of thieves. We can't get distracted. We got to pray. We've got to pray. We've got to pray. Vote and pray. And then pray some more. Pray, vote, and pray. <laughs> pray, campaign, and pray. You have your preference. I have mine. And, you know, the government says I can't sanction anybody, but I refuse to support abortion. I refuse to support. <laughs> well, Philip did it. I can do it, too. I refuse to, report, to support anything that's going to allow a, a 40-year-old man to go use the restroom with my 10-year-old daughter. I'm not supporting that mess. Nah. Have you lost your ever-loving, cotton-picking mind? The trouble, the problem we have with pedophilia in this nation, and you want to open the door and invite them in? I wouldn't even let my 10-year-old boy go to the restroom by himself. But you, you're talking crazy stuff. I refuse to support that. We can't get distracted. We have got to pray and call upon his name. So I just want to say before the music, the lights, the videos, the preaching, we've got to stand in the gap and not get distracted. Ezekiel 22 and 30. So I sought for a man among them who would make up the wall and stand in the gap before me on behalf of the land that I should not destroy. I'm telling you, America is in the balances. I sought for a man among them who would make up the wall, stand in the gap before me on behalf of the land that I should not destroy it, but I found no one. Therefore, I have poured out my indignation on them. I have consumed them with the fire of my wrath, and I have recompensed their deeds on their own heads, says the Lord God. God said, it's up to you. Are you going to stand between God and a dying world? Or are you going to be absent from your place of prayer? And I'm just going to have to judge. I'm just going to have to do what I said I was going to do. You remember Jonah? God sent Jonah to Nineveh, said, I'm going to destroy it. So Jonah had to get swallowed by the whale and spend three days in the whale. But when he came out bleached white from the digestive juices, he probably looked like a ghost. His clothes were solid white. His flesh was solid white. And he, was, he came out, and he was in such an a, 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 a eagerness to do it. He went through a three-day city in one day and brought them all to their knees. And so God forgave them, and he healed them. And Jonah got mad and said, You said you were going to destroy them, and you have saved them. And he got mad. You know what? I would not get mad if God would touch us, if we would get such a powerful move of God on us that people on our job, got to, all we had to do was walk in the room, and they get under conviction with the presence of the Holy Spirit of God. In the, in, on the day of Pentecost in Acts chapter 2, they were in the upper room before anybody preached, before anybody sang, before anybody did anything. They were just up there praying, and every man, devout men in the, in the city came out to see what was going on because there was a move of the Spirit of God. I'm here to tell you, God wants to move in these last days again. Amen. Getting ready to close with this. He said it like this. Come on, guys, get ready. For now I have chosen and sanctified this house that, I may, that my name may be there forever. Take Chronicles 7 and 16. That my name may be there forever. My eyes and my heart will be there perpetually. As for you, if you walk before me as your father David walked and do according to all that I've commanded you and if you keep my statutes and my judgment. He said, I'm going to hear your prayers and I'm going to bless you. I want God to bless America again. You know, you know what? I'd love for Jesus to come today. Well, it's all six of us would. I'd love for Jesus to come today. But you know what? I've got family that are not ready to go. And so it's a little selfish of me to say, oh, come and get me, Jesus. Come and get me, Jesus. And know that there's people I love that are not ready. So as long as he don't come today, I need to do everything I can to get them ready for if he comes tomorrow. I know this is a hard word. My wife, I was telling her what God was speaking to me. She said, that's a hard word. I said, well, on Memorial Day, the hard hitters will be there. I don't want to just give up and say, okay, God, just go ahead and beat them up. 
Okay, God, go ahead and just do what you got to do. This old sorry, sinful world, they made their bed, let them lay in it. No, 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 no. My people which are called by my name will humble themselves and pray. There'll be a, there can be a healing in America again. I believe with all my heart. That's why Jesus didn't tell us when he was coming. Because there may be a possibility that we can delay it if we'll have a revival. God said, you know, I got to, he's looking, like, it's like Sodom and Gomorrah. I got to go get Lot and his family out of there before they get corrupted too. He said that. But if all of a sudden, instead of being influenced, we become an influence. He can say, you know what? I can wait another year. I can wait another day because they're starting to get people saved. So I, that's why I didn't tell my own son when he's to go because I'm waiting to see what you're going to do with what I've given you. Anybody thinking this morning? Go ahead and stand up on your feet. Father, I thank you for your word. There are families here that need a healing. There are loved ones here that need a healing. There are bodies here that need a healing. If you're in this place this morning, you say, you know what? I need a healing in my life. A physical healing, a spiritual healing, an emotional healing. Or you're just burdened for this country. I got... I've got children and grandchildren coming up and, and I, want, I don't want them to come up in a godless heathen society. I want them to come up like I did knowing how good God's been to this great country. You're here this morning and somewhere in your life you need to see a healing. I want you to come and stand with me in the front this morning. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray, I need a healing this morning. I need a healing in my heart, my mind, my spirit, my family, my children. Maybe you've got a child that needs a healing in their spirit. Whatever it is, I need a healing this morning. If my people which are called by my name will humble themselves and pray. God, I need a healing this morning. My family needs a healing. I need a healing in my spirit, my emotions. I need a healing in my, my life, healing on my job, healing in my heart. I need a healing this morning. Come on. I need a healing this morning. I want some Holy Ghost filled prayer warriors to come up and stand with these now. Come on. I'm going to let you anoint them and lay hands on them this morning. Come on, prayer team. Come on up. Pastors, come on up. Let's go through these. We're going to pray. We're going to get a healing in this place this morning. We're going to see a healing in this place this morning. Father God, in the name of Jesus, for my family, Lord, for my loved ones, Lord, I need a healing. I want to see a healing take place. I want to see a, a miracle take place. God, we want to see you pour out your spirit in this place. We want to see you moving in this place. We want to see you pour out in this place, oh God. There needs to be a healing, God. We want to see a healing, Lord. We want to see your mercy and your grace and your love. We want to see your strength and your power. God, let it be a healing in this house today, Lord. There's a healer in this house, God. Do it, we pray. Do it, we pray. Do it, we pray. Do it, we pray, oh God. Yeah, go ahead. Come on, pray with us. Love came down and rescued me. Love came down and set me free. I am yours. I am forever yours. Mountain high, valley low. I sing out and remind my soul. I am yours. I am forever yours. If the storms of life they come and the road ahead gets steep, I will live with hands and faith. I will believe. I remind myself of all that you've done and the love I have because of your. Oh
and my heart is filled with hope and every promise comes my way when i feel your hands of grace rest upon me staying desperate for you god staying humbled at your feet i will lift these hands and praise i will believe i remind myself of all that 